Welcome back to Nightmine, friends. And thanks for dropping in on short notice. I know I usually don't call so quickly after a long visit, but something pretty crazy happened over the weekend regarding a horror game that's shrouded in a lot of mystery, and there are factors of it that just don't seem possible. And I think we ought to put it on our radar, because no matter what happens, it's going to be interesting. And the entire run-up to the main event looks like it's totally our kind of deal. Believe me when I tell you, you've never seen something like this, and neither have I. I've had to do a little bit of exploring in weird sections of the web using the internet wayback machine, and I comb through a bunch of other sites too. So before we begin, I'd like to thank this video sponsor for helping me and my devices stay safe during the exploration. Surfshark is a VPN dedicated to your security online, whenever and however you connect to the internet. Their clean web technology allows you to browse without fear of intrusive ads, malware, trackers, and information fissures, and you can use it on unlimited devices all at the same time. Surfshark's toolkit lets you hide your IP to stay off the radar of those you'd rather not meet or be seen by, and it provides industry-leading data encryption to keep your personal info secure. You can even put on camouflage mode, so not even your internet provider knows you're using a VPN, and Multihop allows you to connect to several countries, keeping your location disguised. Right now, you can protect yourself online with Surfshark for just 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months for free at surfshark.deal slash nightmind. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.21 per month so you can browse securely on all your devices. Again, just go to surfshark.deal slash nightmind and use the code nightmind to get 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months for free, or just click the link in the description box below. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and watching out for me while I dug through a lot of weird old website archives. Now, let me catch you up on exactly why I had to do that and what this is all about. On April 7th, 2021, the official PlayStation channel on YouTube released a trailer for a game titled Abandoned. Abandoned is a cinematic horror survival shooter that emulates realistic survival and first-person perspective, set in a massive, detailed open-world environment. While we don't want to go through the full gameplay details just yet, we wanted to give you a glimpse of what you can expect. The gameplay video will be available soon. In the meantime, we released an announcement teaser for Abandoned, which you can also download on your PS5 soon to experience the high-quality environment real-time on your PS5 console. Sounds legitimate, right? Too bad the trailer didn't. Over a minute and 40 seconds, viewers were treated to cinematic shots of the rendered environment, blackout cuts, and some narration that didn't sound quite right, placing words where they didn't fit. Mentions of a story that could overcome to all of us, and confusing the phrase loved ones with lost ones. The narrator mentioned the idea of waking up in a place far away, with no assistance, on the run from a strong, blood-loving community led by a religious nutjob, a false prophet that will do anything for power, anything for wealth. The visuals were nice, but not very informative. The narration was picked on a lot by the comment section. Altogether, this trailer didn't seem real, and it ended with a promise of gameplay. The trailer came with a post on the PlayStation blog the same day, written by Hassan Karaman, the director of Blue Box Game Studios, the developers of Abandon. Hassan reports that they're based in the Netherlands, and their new title is coming exclusively to PS5. The story is centered around Jason Longfield, who wakes up in a strange forest. Abandoned and not remembering how he got there, Jason soon finds out that he was kidnapped and brought there for a dark purpose. Fighting for his survival, his main goal is escape. Hassan writes that the studio wants to craft a cinematic first-person story. Not a fast-paced shooter, but something realistic. There are talking points about the technology behind the PS5 and wanting to show gameplay footage soon. So, what's the big deal? Bad trailer, vague writing, so what? People began investigating Blue Box Game Studios after this, asking where the company even came from. The website, if you look at it currently, is bare. It mostly just redirects to social media. But on the day of the trailer's release, it had a bit more content. Using the Internet Wayback Machine, we can take a look and see that the site wasn't looking so great. The top reads, We are adding new content to the website which may cause some offline pages. There are more issues than just some pages offline, but the content is there, which means we can work with it. From first glance, you probably see the issue. This doesn't appear to be the kind of site that represents someone with an upcoming release who just had their first big trailer. Team size tells us a bit. Our team is currently with just 10 people. That's believable for a new studio, especially an indie studio, but if the team exists and there are 10 people, why is the content scroller from the team blog filled with articles from 2015 and they include faces but no names? You can't even click most of these and they're not even articles, just statements. There are precisely three links in these blog posts. 
Read here for their choice to not develop for VR and PC. Sign up here for an event about the team creating emotional interactions for video games from September 2015. And apply here for jobs. The jobs link leads nowhere. The event sign up just opens an email form to contact the studio. And the read here link actually gives you something. A page from a different website for one of their games, Rewind, Voices of the Past, which notes that work on the title began in 2014 and sought to utilize VR, but that function will depend on how VR performs as a platform. There are plenty of broken pieces to the Rewind site too, but here's the homepage. An emotionally cinematic drama game. Rewind is listed under their portfolio along with a bunch of unannounced games, which makes the team extremely busy for 10 people just getting started in the industry. That link to the survivors under the links menu doesn't go anywhere, and neither does the blue puzzle series. But hey, we were told at the top that the offline pages were a problem. That's fair, gotta give them some time, right? So let's move forward to the incident that brought everybody's attention in. Blue Box's Twitter account was made in January 2015, but the first tweet you can find came on May 31st, 2021. Experience all trailers and gameplay reveals with images rendered real-time by the PS5's hardware with the abandoned real-time trailers PS5 app. Game Hub live now on PS5. The date for worldwide availability is listed as June 20th. This is a new concept, a real-time trailers app. But on top of how odd the trailer was, it just increased confusion and mystery around the title. Now, April 7th to May 31st is enough time to fix up a website if you're really trying to establish your media presence, isn't it? How'd the site look around this point? We only have one reference, from May 3rd, but changes have taken place. The new logo is up, a screenshot from Abandoned is posted, mentions of Abandoned, the game's website is linked. Oh, and the team blogs and mention of all prior projects are now gone, but there's still a claim of 10 team members. No way to find them. No team page, no portfolio page. Is now also a good time to tell you that if you try to save the images of those apparent team members, the file names just come up as Art1, Art2, and Art3, as if they are, uh, not real people on the team. As for the abandoned website, here's what you've got. That's it. Here's what the header for the blue box site looked like back in January of 2016, and here's the working version of the team blogs. They really did stay that way for years, with all ten of those team members getting no public credit. But what about Rewind, right? That game seems to have some kind of background to it. It began its life on March 17, 2015, through a Kickstarter. The trailer is vague and doesn't tell you very much, except that EVP is involved. Looking at the info for the project, we see... Rewind is a cinematic first-person horror adventure game for the PC, Oculus Rift, and consoles. You play as Jim Walker, a professional paranormal investigator who lost his wife and daughter during a car accident eight years ago. Jim had the desire to communicate with his wife and daughter one more time using EVP, electronic voice phenomena, and after a successful session, he started to work as a paranormal investigator. For eight years, Jim experienced real hauntings, communications, and paranormal activities. He thought that he saw it all, until he came across a haunted mansion hidden in High Hills Village. There are screenshots which show that something, at the very least, was being made. There were HD videos of the prototype, but those are all private now. So whatever happened to this? Did the Kickstarter fail? Succeed? Neither. Three weeks after launching, Blue Box announced that Rewind would be fully funded by a private investor who would allow them to achieve their goals within a short time span. The Kickstarter was cancelled two days later. On October 4th, 2015, an update for the eight people that did back this campaign was posted. Yes, development was still ongoing, but now under a whole new concept. Where had the game gone since the private investor showed up? On to Steam Greenlight, back in September of 2015. Early followers of Rewind Voices of the Past may know the older concept of the game when it was a first-person exploration game. Ever since Rewind Voices of the Past faced a new polished AAA concept, we decided to release the older version as an individual game named The Lost Tape. So the information you see here is the newest version. Different screenshots were provided, and the updated storyline. The game would now feature Jessica Thompson, who lost her parents during a plane crash, and has been able to see and communicate with the dead. So far, all we've seen are screenshots. Are there any legitimate gameplay videos? Thanks to the channel Pater Games, we've got some from March of 2015. Notice the language used in this at the head? Playable prototype trailer. It was very popular in the wake of PT to mimic its ideas and descriptions. This will be important later. For now, check out how this first experience of Rewind was allowed to go public. Oh god, and I can't move and this ganze sieht ziemlich ziemlich creepy aus. Erinnert ein bisschen.
<lacht> ah, ich kann mich umgucken. Alter, wie geil ist das denn? Wie sieht die denn aus? Äh, ich gehe in die Richtung. Wie geil sieht das? Okay, also da muss noch ein bisschen was gemacht werden an den Prototypen, definitiv. Ich kann hier hinten irgendwo hin. Die Charaktersteuerung ist ein bisschen komisch, finde ich. Aber <lacht> das sieht echt gut aus. Oh. Jetzt sind wir wieder Ego. Ich würde mir wünschen, wenn das die ganze Zeit Ego wäre, einfach, weißt du? Habe ich irgendwie eine Taschenlampe oder so? Habe ich leider nicht. Rewind was in such an early state that it didn't warrant even being talked about online. And while the ending said coming November 2015, it never did. Blue Box, or its only real member going by the name Sneaky Warrior online, seemed to move on to developing the haunting Bloodwater Curse. The first action regarding this game was an early access launch event to Steam, which fails to load if you look it up, on March 27, 2020. On December 22, 2020, The Haunting finally got online. And just like Rewind, it was an alpha phase. This seemed a lot more legitimate than Rewind, however. You could download it, play, give feedback, and characters weren't floating around in T-poses. Overall, it does look like the work of an indie developer trying to drum up attention for their project, and having some kind of base to really introduce. Where it gets strange is in the updates for The Haunting. On March 8th, 2021, Sneaky Warrior wrote, New update available early April. The last three months were busy for the dev team, and they created a whole new experience, changing the camera perspective and story. Blue Box said, We encourage everyone who already has the early access version to download the big game-changing update within the first week of April 2021. Do you remember what happened in the first week of April? That's right. The trailer for Abandoned appeared, with a blog post from Hassad Grahman bringing Blue Box into the world on a big scale. Two days later, an update arrived on Steam. Hello everyone, we wanted to make clear that Blue Box Game Studios is no longer working on the haunting Bloodwater curse. We, Create Q Interactive, will be finishing the game. Please bear in mind that the new game concept has not been updated yet and will be available soon. Thanks for everyone for their support. P.S. Our colleagues at Blue Box Game Studios are legit and not some Hideo Kojima secret marketing trick. Wait, 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 wait. Hideo Kojima secret marketing trick? Yeah, Hideo Kojima secret marketing trick. The same Hideo Kojima who secretly made and had PT distributed. The same Kojima who secretly unveiled Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, using a fake indie game studio called Moby Dick trying to present their new title, The Phantom Pain. Let's hit that backstory quickly using the fastest possible resource, Wikipedia. At the Swag Video Game Awards in December 2012, a teaser trailer for a game known as The Phantom Pain was shown, credited to a new Swedish developer known as Moby Dick Studio, and was described as being 100% gameplay, allegedly led by Joaquin Mogren. The studio's mission statement read that it aimed to deliver an uncompromising, exciting, and touching game experience to people all around the globe. After the presentation, commentators speculated that The Phantom Pain was actually a Metal Gear game. The name Joachim was an anagram of Kojima. The domain name for the studio's website had only been registered about two weeks prior to the announcement, and several people wearing Moby Dick Studio shirts were sitting in a VIP area intended for Konami staff. Hideo Kojima stated he was impressed by the trailer and how Mogren was inspired by Metal Gear. An actor playing a heavily bandaged Mogren appeared in an interview on the March 14, 2013 episode of Game Trailers TV. While stating he could not reveal many details, he confirmed that more details about the Phantom Pain would be revealed at the upcoming Game Developers Conference, and showed a series of screenshots on an iPad to the show's host, Jeff Keighley. After Keighley pointed out Kojima's Fox Engine logo in the screenshots, Mogren appeared nervous and the segment abruptly ended. On March 27, 2013, at GDC, Kojima confirmed that his studio was behind the trailer, and announced that Metal Gear Solid V would be two separate games. Ground Zeroes would now serve as a prologue for the main game, which was officially announced as Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Kojima had played this trick once. He had played another trick with PT. And now, here was this strange indie developer who seemed to have just slipped through the back door into a realm he didn't have the credentials to access and show off his mystery game. Adding fuel to the fire was the discovery that if you translate Hideo from Japanese and Google Translate to Turkish, you get the name Karaman, the last name of the only member of Blue Box to ever have an identity, Hassan Karaman, aka Sneaky Warrior. With a history of horror project attempts behind him and genuine news that a new Silent Hill game should be coming from Konami soon, with major talk about the announcement being the summer of 2021, people went wild speculating that Hassan Karaman was really Hideo Kojima, brought back to Konami to see his vision for Silent Hill come to fruition. It didn't help that in the abandoned trailer, the letters P and T are seen blocked off by a tree, and talk of a bloodthirsty group led by a religious nutjob in the story for Abandoned immediately brings to mind the Order, the cult that operated in Silent Hill. 
Rumors had to be squashed by Blue Box in the same update they announced that Create Q was taking over. But honestly, they did a very poor job of convincing anyone of the changes regarding the haunting. First of all, there's only one Create Q you can find online. They're also in the Netherlands, but they don't do video games. They apparently create in-store product displays and tech integrations for brands, and they're real. The address from their website leads to a real place, with their logo out front, and their team members are actual people with public names, which is better than Blue Box ever gave its team. Still, what would a company like this do with a property like The Haunting? And there's not much explanation for this moment on Steam. Sneaky Warrior, aka Hassan, replies to someone saying, Blue Box Game Studios is working on Abandon for PS5. The Haunting will be done by us, Create Q Interactive. Well, that's great and all, but you're still on the developer account for the only public member of Blue Box Game Studios while saying you're the new company. <laughs> Do you expect us to believe you signed over your account as well? If you did, why are you still writing like you're the same person in the comment before this one? We know Sneaky Warrior and Blue Box are the same for a few reasons, but none as blatant as this exchange. Could I have an email address for press release someone asks on Steam? Sure, Sneaky Warrior says, and provides the email press at blueboxgamestudios.com. Then, if you go into the PlayStation Network and look up that username, you pull up Hassan Graben, who has a big check mark and has added developer at Blue Box Game Studios. Hassan, Sneaky Warrior, Blue Box, it's all one guy. All it's ever appeared to be is one guy, and he's done absolutely nothing to show off anyone else working on his games despite claiming that team does exist. And also, apparently, Fairy Godmother private investors exist. And now somehow he's presenting Abandon after managing to pass off his previous game concept to a company that doesn't even buy or develop games. And in his library of games played, he somehow has a game called Demon's Blood with Siren Head as the cover image? What is even going on here? <sighs> Let's do a little review of what we've got so far. Asai Graben has a history of making horror games that barely existed and had ridiculous turnover rates. He's built a house of cards out of his online presence for a game studio that's never shown its team or completed a project. His name translates to Hideo. The entire flip from the haunting to abandon reeks of misdirection. Kojima has a history of playing got your nose with surprise releases. The only letters given a special touch in the abandoned trailer are PT. Kojima Productions and Death Stranding have ties to the Netherlands, where Blue Box is based. Konami and games industry workers have all but guaranteed a Silent Hill announcement this summer, and right around the time the abandoned real-time trailers app was supposed to launch, Konami's official shop goes on a teasing spree for new Silent Hill merch, culminating in the official announcement that new material will be available in the shop, including limited series skateboards, which is... Wait, a skateboard? What year is this again? Is Blink-182 on the radio right now? Okay, anyhow. The match that lit the powder keg on this whole pile of clues was this. A tweet from Blue Box informing followers that Abandoned was just a project title, and teasing that the real title started with S and ended with L. This was deleted before I could grab a screenshot, but it was the tweet that caused the true firestorm over the weekend. You can't really blame anyone for looking at all of this and seeing one big blood red conclusion. I haven't even hit every connection people have made, because so much of this looks like it's enough if you want to accept the Kojima angle, but there are issues with that. While there were denials of affiliation involved in the Moby Dick Studio production for The Phantom Pain, none of them were as adamant or boldface as the declarations made by Blue Box. And as the denials rolled out, the public attention just increased. The tweet I mentioned was deleted because of the firestorm it created, and followed up by this tweet. We wanted to set things straight. We have no relations with Konami. Silent Hill is owned by Konami. We do not have any relations with Hideo Kojima. It was never our intention to tease the name as Silent Hill. We sincerely apologize for this. There was also a press release issued by Blue Box titled, Our Response to the Hideo Kojima Rumors. We received several emails regarding the Hideo Kojima rumor. We have no association with Hideo Kojima, nor was it our intention to claim such a statement. We are a small group of developers working on a passionate title we wanted to work on for a long time. We have been assisting other studios in the past with their projects, and we wanted to work on our very first big project. While it is true that we've been working on small projects in the past, we certainly didn't use that for marketing purposes. We hope this has clarified this matter and hope to see you all in our very first gameplay reveal of Abandoned. And then Jeff Keighley began talking about his DM from Hassan Karam and asking to be part of summer events, which raises further questions, because he gave this screenshot but it had no date, which made it a very recent DM, even though Jeff says he got it a while ago. 
Then Jason Schreier got in on the investigation, and before long, there were articles and videos all over the place about Blue Box Game Studios and the Kojima rumors. It grew so big that Blue Box had to put out another announcement, this time warning people that there were false email messages using their contact information to sell fake pre-orders of Abandoned. The hype grew so big it attracted scam artists! And during all of this, the app for the real-time trailers got delayed to the 25th, making the mystery linger even longer in the shadows. On Monday, June 21st, as news articles and word of mouth spread, Blue Box put out another statement. We wanted to answer the rumors one last time. We are a small indie studio with actual real people working on a passionate game. We want to do a live stream with a Q&A and where you can ask all your questions to clarify every confusion and rumors. We just want to set expectations. But that was not enough. So Blue Box played their best card. Hassan in the flesh. Hello everyone, um, this is Hassan Karma. Um, just wanted to do a really quick video just show, to show myself that uh, I'm a real person. And um, yeah, I'm not really associated with uh, Hideo Kojima. Uh, I'm not an actor, I'm not working on Silent Hill. So um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys uh, yeah, my face and uh, that I'm real. And um, hopefully we'll do uh, a QA uh, very soon. Just have to figure out when it uh, would be, and then uh, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk more. All right, everyone, have a good one. The man in the video matches the man in the photo for Hassan on PlayStation. This is the same guy. Again, it's still just the one guy, but the images match up. Where does this leave us now? The app is due to arrive on the twenty fifth. It will apparently kick off with an introduction to its purpose and how to use it. After that, it's all up in the air. Will there be gameplay that same day? Hopefully, but that's the most that can be expected right now. The app is coming. This is an incredibly difficult situation to gauge. Asad can say up and down that he's not an actor, he's not affiliated with Konami, it's not this, it's not that. But there is one thing that can't be denied. Absolutely none of his claims about his company, its history, or its team stand up to scrutiny. Let's look at the statement that was put out again. We are a small group of developers working on a passionate title we want to work on for a long time. We have been assisting other studios in the past with their projects and we want to work on our very first big project. Then why is it only ever just Hassan? Why is there no history of other projects? How come there are no other studios that have ever mentioned Blue Box or Hassan? From 2015 on, he said he had a team of 10, but there were no legitimate faces, no names, nothing. Sneaky Warrior handled everything, and when you're an indie studio or group or collective, the only time, the only time you keep teammates or collaborators in the shadows is when you're running an ARG or have a big secret project for a big secret reason. If you feel like the utter lack of a credible history and willingness to name dedicated team members working as hard as they can on this game is the real story, you are not alone. I'm right there with you, and it seems like Jason Schreier has his own questions about this mystery. He released an interview with Hassan Karaman on Monday night, June 21st. Here are some cuts. Speaking with a Dutch accent, Karaman said Abandon has been in development since 2017, although the concept was changed a lot of times. He said the Blue Box team consists of 10 people and that he had outsourced work to several other studios, which accounted for the 50 figure he mentioned earlier. He said he'd attracted the attention of Sony in 2015 following that failed Kickstarter. First red flag reveal from this interview. Who manages to attract Sony's attention with something like Rewind's Kickstarter? If Sony was the backer, that would be the ultimate fairy godmother situation. It's the kind of pickup you could really only wish for because it doesn't happen. If you have no successes to your name, no buzz, and not even a decent beta to show from any of your launches, Sony doesn't magically come down from the sky and say, hey, I'll back whatever concept you have in your brain. It just doesn't happen. Continuing on, Jason writes, The conversation raised many more questions. Grauman would not make other members of his team available for interviews and would only identify one who didn't respond to a request for comment. Grauman said he had signed a contract with Sony, but wouldn't offer specifics. He also said the game was funded by investors, but wouldn't say who. There is a reason for that, but I really can't talk about it, Grauman said. Grauman named two of the six or seven outsourcing companies that he said Blue Box is working with, Noir Studio and Decagon Studios. Representatives for both companies declined to comment. 
New Art Studio is absolutely nothing to laugh at. They have worked on massive, massive games, from the upcoming Halo Infinite to Ghost of Tsushima and a lot of Bethesda titles. Decagon Studios are serious quality too. They're excellent modelers and have a lot of credits to their name. So how does Blue Box end up in the position to even be working with studios like these? And what is keeping Hassan so tight-lipped about this project? You can show off the people working with you without giving away elements of the game. In fact, if there is anything to learn about your team members just by finding out who they are, that creates more buzz, which is good for you. I am not convinced that this is going to be a Silent Hill title. I am not convinced that Kojima is behind it or even involved. But I am convinced that there's some sort of fairy godmother involved. And there's a lot to that involvement we are not seeing. And that's where we need to be asking questions. I have to be coldly blunt about this after everything that I've analyzed here. Developers who just put out half-baked alphas of Unreal Engine builds at home, which still include T-posing player character models, and get no buzz, no notoriety, and completely fail to develop beta builds, they don't get this treatment. They are very seldom offered opportunities to work with the kind of money that requires hiring seven studios. <laughs> The history of Blue Box leading to its current position, as it's being told, it's a developer's fantasy. So what is the factor that made it reality? There are very few conclusions you can really draw from this whole affair. The only thing that's certain is that this is really one hell of a ride. <laughs> I mean, really. When was the last time we all just went nuts over an upcoming video game like this? Intentional or not, we've got to thank Hassan and Blue Box for that kind of collective intrigue and frantic hype. It's just a ton of fun to get excited in mass and break out our obsessive detective kits or something game related with a ticking clock on it again. E3 was kind of boring this year, but this was a nice surprise, even if it ends up being a disappointment in the end. And those of us in the unfiction field, we can find a whole lot of lessons in this. Mainly, there's a lesson in how important perception is to those looking at your online presence and the movements that you make. If Hassan had never tweeted, starts with S, ends with L, when he already knew the game had Kojima and Silent Hill rumors attached, he would have saved himself a lot of trouble. He should have just kept quiet instead of playing with fire. These rumors have been following Abandon since the trailer came out, and he's aware of that from what he posted on April 9th. He knew what he was doing, he shouldn't have said it. And if this game even ends up being something like Survival as the actual title, he still shouldn't have said it. He knew what people were going to think. And there are a bunch of other points in which perception from the outside could have been handled better. That's one of the more difficult aspects of what many of us aim to do. Judging not only what's believable for the story, the characters, and the presentation, but the number of ways that something is going to be perceived by people. Not just how we think it will be perceived, but how they will perceive it in multiple avenues. Writing the line between what seems real and what lets people in on the fact that something is fake while keeping the story engaging and hitting your targets, it's a juggling act. But even when you're not trying to play up an ARG angle to what you're doing, you can see how miscalculations in the audience's eyes can lead to unwanted situations. For whatever factors you can control, you've got to. It's very easy to tell that Hassan fell in over his head on this and has been freewheeling ever since. Don't let yourself get to that point when you go live with the project. Think about your movements before they're made and what kind of connections people might draw. Guide the intended ones, eliminate the unintended, and do it all to whatever degree you're able. Also, you all just learned how to pull off a long con by witnessing how much intrigue was generated by Blue Box's get up fall down pattern of game development leading up to a big, actual launch for a title. There is power in the long con, especially when developing stuff in this field often takes us longer than we want it to. Anyone could follow the template of Blue Box's alleged history and use it as a great smokescreen for a prologue to their project. However this unfolds, I do hope Hassan lands on his feet. I really do. Assuming he's really just an innocent indie dev who stumbled his way into all this. I've got no solid predictions at this point for Abandoned except one. When this gameplay drops, a whole lot of people are going to be watching, and we're all going to be talking about the outcome. Let's hope it's at least half as exciting as the mystery was when this title goes gold. That's it for now, everyone. Thanks to Surfshark once again for sponsoring this video and providing a special offer to Nightmind viewers. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who make me feel like I've always got a real fairy godmother at my back. You can see the names of all these patrons at the end of this video. And if you want to support Nightmind and the Nightmind Index for new unfiction projects, you can join them for as low as $2 a month. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne. 
and like another conspiracy about Kojima in disguise, you'll be seeing me again real soon. Yukiri o Yasumi